Interested in some Sodrum Studios and Paleophiles merchandise? Check out our links for that in the description down below. Don't forget, if you have any questions regarding the species profile in this episode, please feel free to contact Sodrum Studios at askpaleo at yahoo.com. Also check out our Instagram page. You can find the link below. Thank you. Now, on with the episode. Initially, I believe to be a pack. Follow me as I am your tour guide through this adventure. To pounce on and pin down prey. looking at a, uh, a stegosaur family, a herd of them, and for some reason, they're oddly breeding. So I'm coming into this uh, little baby here, and I really gotta get you guys to keep it down. Um, oh, the tour's not even supposed to be for... Okay then, uh, uh, one second. Dr. K, do you come in? Dr. K. Yes, I copy. This is Dr. K. Yeah, can you... Uh, do you mind taking these guys on a tour for our uh, roof lizard? I would be more than happy to provide the tour. Okay, thank you so much. Over and out. All right, go ahead and follow her. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Prepare yourselves as you follow me on this tour while we venture through the life and biology of the Stegosaurus. One moment, please, while I download all associated files. Extracting species profile. Roofed lizard, otherwise known as Stegosaurus. This animal lived in the Jurassic period approximately 201.3 to 145 million years ago. This was when some of the largest herbivores roamed the earth, like Diplodocus, while carnivores like Allosaurus had just come onto the scene. Stegosaurus, as massive and majestic as the animal was, surely had the smallest brain to body ratio of any known dinosaur. The brain was only about 60 squared centimeters. That's about the average of an undeveloped puppy. In fact, a few centuries ago, paleontologists actually believed that Stegosaurus had a second brain located in the rear. In the 1880s, Yale paleontologist O.C. Mosh found that some specimens of Stegosaurus had a large cavity in its sacrum, where the spinal column meets the pelvis. O.C. Mosh's finding for the large cavity in the sacrum was believed to have been the location of the second brain. But, as we know now, that's definitely not the case. The cavity in the sacrum was most likely used to store lycogen, the compound that humans and animals both used to store energy. But just because the brain was small did not mean the animal was dumb. The 5.3 to 7 metric ton quadruped had a deadly weapon to defend itself at the end of its tail. Protruding from the end of the tail were four massive spikes, otherwise known as thagomizers. Fossil evidence shows that they were very effective weapons. In 2014, the study of an Allosaurus fossil from Wyoming showed that its pubic bone had a puncture wound that matched the spikes on a Stegosaurus tail. Researchers concluded that the Allosaurus had attacked the Stegosaurus, which while fighting back actually landed a blow from a tail spike, or thagomizer, directly into the predator's groin. The wound became so badly infected that it killed the Allosaurus and the fossil record that was preserved was possibly one of the most gruesome groin shots ever recorded. 
The Allosaurus species that was found in Wyoming definitely did show that Stegosaurus did have a very deadly weapon on the end of its tail. This Thagomizer actually went through the pelvis and made a huge hole in it. Now, the animal didn't die directly. The animal eventually died because of very, very bad infection, and that is unfortunate. But, that is definitely not the only sign that these two species actually came into conflict with each other. In fact, a specimen of Stegosaurus had been uncovered, and the neck plate, or the scute on the neck, actually had a U-shaped bite mark out of it. And that U-shaped bite mark only matched the Allosaurus. The Thagomizer got its name in 1982 from Gary Larson's comic strip, The Far Side, depicting a group of cavemen getting a lesson in dinosaur anatomy. It showed the Stegosaurus tailed spikes with a label underneath calling them Thagomizers. And I quote, after the late Thag Simmons. Unfortunately, cavemen and dinosaurs never coexisted, but the name of the Stegosaurus weapon stuck. And by the 1990s, paleontologists actually started to refer to this tail feature as a Thagomizer. Robert Bacher, who studied the Wyoming Allosaurus, assures that Thagomizer is an accepted term for a Stegosaurid's spiky tail. The most recognizable feature on this animal is the bony plates that stagger one another across the back, called scutes. For quite some time, paleontologists thought that the scutes along the back were used as thermal regulation. In the 1970s, some researchers discovered small tubes to circulate blood that ran through the scutes that were thought to regulate temperature. But not everyone agrees with this theory, as some species of stegosaurids did not have many scutes. So if it was used for temperature regulation, then it is believed that the other species of stegosaurids would have more, if not the same amount of scutes, that stegosaurus had. And the tubes did not run all the way through the scutes, which they would do if their job was to circulate blood. Some experts believe that the scutes were used as a defense, but if that was true, then why just on the back and not on the sides or the skull? The scutes were comprised of bony scales as seen on modern day crocodiles and were actually not connected at all from the rest of the skeleton, but, in fact, were rose from the skin of the animal. The largest scutes were located around the hip area of the pelvic girdle and were approximately two feet wide, with the smaller of the plates running down the neck and tail. The most common theory of today is that the plates, or scutes, were used for sexual or dominance display, among other stegosaurus, like modern birds, or even deer, moose, or elk of the modern-day animal kingdom. The animal fed on ferns and mosses low on the forest floor, but it was possible for the Stegosaurus to rise on its hind legs to reach much higher vegetation. So, Stegosaurus was originally discovered by Othniel Marsh in western Colorado. Uh, that was during the Bone Wars between Marsh and Cope. And the history of Stegosaurus is a giant mess. I highly suggest any, anyone that's interested in that to look into it. Uh, there's a lot of good information all over the internet, including Wikipedia. Uh, and if, if for me to sit here and, and talk about it, we'd be here for 30 minutes, an hour or so. We don't have time for all that. Ain't nobody got time for that! The geologic formation that Marsh found Stegosaurus in was the Morrison Formation. Now that's a combination of different siltstones, claystones, mudstones, and even conglomerates uh, that occur in western Colorado, in uh, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, and even down in the panhandle of Oklahoma, the sliver right above Texas. And the interesting thing about the Morrison Formation is that on the eastern side of the Black Hills, which is in western South Dakota, dinosaurs are not nearly as abundant as any, everywhere else in the, the Morrison Formation. Most of the time when you go and hunt an outcrop of the Morrison, you are about 80% likely to find dinosaurs, unless you're on the eastern side of the Black Hills, for whatever reason. Paleoecology, the, or the, the environment that Stegosaurus lived in, uh, is primarily determined based off of the depositional environment of the Morrison Formation. 
Morrison Formation was deposited in a semi-arid environment with uh, defined wet and dry spells, uh, with massive flat floodplains, which is where we're going to find most of the, the remains of these animals. Uh, Stegosaurus, the main plant life in its environment, was conifers and different ferns and cycadioids, which are kind of like a fern tree, like a sago palm. That's the closest modern analog that we have to cycadioids. Uh, grasses were not around it during the late Jurassic, neither were flowering plants, which didn't emerge until the late Cretaceous. However, the different animals that we had at that time be somewhat familiar or somewhat uh, recognizable because we did have mammals. Uh, there were different types of theropods, which we're all familiar with the Allosaurus and the Ceratosaurus. Allosaurus being the main predator for Stegosaur. Stegosaur also shared its environment with a plethora of different herbivores, including several sauropods like the the Plodocus, the Camarasaurus, and the Apatosaurus, as well as the small Ornithischian, the Othnelia, because Hadrosaurus did not really emerge and get their foothold until the early Cretaceous. I'll have to start somewhere. Thank you for watching this episode of Paleophiles. If you liked the episode, we would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you're interested in keeping up to date with future content, consider subscribing to our channel and checking out the Stow Drum Studios official Facebook page. The link can be found in the description below. Want to know how to support the channel and receive some awesome perks? Then check out our Stow Drum Studios Patreon page and consider becoming a patron. This link is also provided in the link below.